ज्ञानशलाकय चक्षुरमी तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददाति स्वदाक वंदेहम श्रीगुरु श्रीयुत पदकमल श्रीगुर वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागर जात सहगन रघुनाथ तम सजीव साधवैत सवदूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पदा सहगन ललिता श्री विशाकांता नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणे हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाचाकल्पतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्ये पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सो वेलकम बैक टू द श्रीमद भागवतम थीमैटिक सीरीज yesterday we began <clears throat> the chapter 3 uh, which is further answering uh, the first five verses uh, how did the lord uh, manifest himself in his various avatars so the first avatars who performed the shrishti leela are the purusha avatars so in the first five verses the purusha avatars have been discussed and when the creation is manifested within the creation there are various leela avatars which uh, come and perform past times so the leela avatars uh, with verse number 6 till almost till 26 27 uh, the description of the 22 incarnations will be there and then krishna's to bhagwan swayam <clears throat> uh verse will be discussed how krishna is swayam bhagwan and a very important topic uh, as to clarify that the virat purusha is not included in the list of incarnations so that's what uh sud goswami will make clear and emphatically he'll draw that shrimad bhagavatam is also an incarnation it is as good as the sun krishna is also the sun and when the krishna sun is gone the shrimad bhagavatam is a horizon so that will answer uh, uh, question 6 question 4 uh, and 5 have been uh, will be answered in uh, verses 1 to 5 and then beginning from verses 6 in chapter 3 and question 3 as to what is the purpose the lord incarnates <clears throat> he incarnates so that he can reclaim the souls who are in the pure goodness so that is uh, answered in uh, verse 34 of chapter 2 uh, which yesterday we discussed so yesterday we uh, 
if you remember, uh, I'll just recap. Almost I summarized what we discussed yesterday. But uh, yesterday we began the discussion on uh, uh, chapter 3, the list of avatars. And we saw the overview and then we discussed Jagre Paurusham Rupam. Uh, the Lord accepts you know, the Purusha. The first Purusha is the Karunadakshai Vishnu, who is called as Mahavishnu. And this you know, Bhagavan himself, that Vasudev only accepts this form, which is eternally existing <laughs> and creates the 16 primary ingredients for creation, for the <laughs> creation, Loka Shishikshaya, beginning with Mahat Adibi. So we saw Prabhupada's commentary and Vishnu Chakratakur's commentary on this. And then in the next verse, further the creation pastime of how that same Purusha expands <coughs> uh, into Garbhadakshaya Vishnu and enters into each universe. And from him, Brahmaji is born. Yes, Ambasi. Shayanasya, he uh, does shahan, you know, we sleep on a bed of wood or today they are mattresses, but the Lord's bed is, you know, a water bed. <laughs> First of all, the serpent skin is very, very cooling, if you know, and then the serpent is lying in the ocean. <laughs> so Shayanasya, Yog Nidram, he is uh, deeply in Yog Nidra, in trance. And Nabi Ridambuja, from the Nabi uh, manifest Brahmaji, Brahma Vishwa Sri So we saw this uh, verse uh, explanation and commentary by Srila Prabhupada. So now we will go to uh, verse 3. It's very important, verse 3. <clears throat> now verse 3 uh, is the conception of the Virata Purusha. <clears throat> And this is a little difficult to understand. And uh, this is the vast subject. It is repeatedly discussed in the Bhagavatam in the first canto here in the form of principle. In the second canto, there is a there are three descriptions of the Virat Purusha. In the first chapter, it is there twice. And then it is there in the uh, middle chapters of the Bhagavatam. In the last chapter, 10th chapter, it is there. So, three times the conception of Virat Purusha is there. Then in the Kapil Shiksha, the conception of the Virat Purusha. Fourth time it is there. The fifth time when discussing the cosmology. In the fifth canto, it is there. It will come again. Narration will come again in the tenth canto. It will come again in the eleventh canto. So, many times this Virat Purusha conception is there. And... Uh, we cannot go into the subject right now because it is a separate theme itself. But whatever Prabhupada has and Vishwanath Chakrathakura has mentioned, uh, we will only cover up that. So let us see. Yes, Yavaya Samstani Kalpito Loka Vistaraha Tadvai Bhagavato Rupam Vishuddham Sadva Urj Sattva Urjatam. The expanse of the planets, Loka Vistara. It was already in the previous verse mentioned, you know, uh, Brahma, uh, Vishwa, Shajampati, Brahmaji, who is the creator of the 14 planetary systems. He is the secondary creator. So, Yasya Avvaya Samstani, the expanse of the planets, Loka Vistare, is imagined, Kalpito. Now, this imagination, I would like to point out here only that is imagination or visualization is not something which is a speculation. This imagination has, you know, some grounding reality. It is grounded in a reality. Let, it, let me put it like this. That this description is given in the Bhagavatam. And imagining like this, you will get results. <clears throat> now, if you imagine 
that you know there is a mountain and there is a blue sky and the combination which is called as a kanka uh, the combination or the just opposing of these two you know there is a blue mountain and that blue mountain i imagine as krishna this kind of a imagination will not you know purify the heart but the imagination uh, as to that the loka vistara yes avaya samsthane are the various places of his limbs there is the eternal lord who is having a satchidanand form <clears throat> who is beyond this material creation and you imagine this 14 planetary systems okay the lotus feet are the lowest of the planetary systems that is the patal lok and then the head uh, is the satya lok and the entire body you imagine like this you conceptualize like this and you meditate so this is a bona fide meditation this is not some imagination which is out of speculation but this is a imagination which is conceived uh, as a bona fide imagination in the bhagavatam and this kind of imagination is recommended for especially impersonalists for the yogis and by imagination imagining like this they purify their heart and they make progress so <clears throat> Uh, is situated in the various limbs. Yes, avaya samstane. The form of the Lord is tadvai bhagavata rupam. So actually, this form of the Lord is a conceptualization of the 14. But the form of the Lord is pure sattva, unmixed with rajas and tamas, vishuddham sattvam, and is composed of eternity, bliss, and knowledge. Urjitam. So the conceptualization of the Virat Purusha is an imagination it is a bona fide imagination and it is grounded in the reality because it is a description given in the Bhagavatam. <clears throat> but the form of the Lord, the transcendental form of the Lord, which is beyond the creation, it is completely spiritual. Satchidanam, Vishuddha Sattvam, Urjitam. That is what is being made the point here. Okay, let's see Prabhupada's commentary. And after going through Prabhupada's commentary, and Vishwanath Chakra Thakur's commentary on the next verse also. Then I will take up questions today. The conception of the Virat Purusha or the Vishwaru. Now Prabhupada is saying conception. It is a conception. When you are having darshan of the deity, it is not a conception. It is as it is. You know, Sakshat Rajendra Nandan. He is as he is. He is. There is no conception. You need not have visualization. It is direct darshan of the Lord and it is non-different from the Satchidanand form of the Lord. But this conception that the lower planetaries are the lotus feet, the upper planetary, the, so the lowest of the planet and the upper planet is the face of the beautiful head of the Lord and the face of the Lord. This conception, Prabhupada is saying, it is meant, especially meant for the neophytes who can hardly think of the transcendental form of the personality. So they have no idea that the Lord is having a complete spiritual form. So they cannot conceive that. So it is given for these neophytes who are you know the yogis. And in fact uh, for the Kanishna Bhaktas also uh, uh, we can use this tool as a remembrance for the Lord. So the Virata Rupa is uh, the term, the terminology used in the Bhagavatam. The Vishwarupa is the terminology used in the Bhagavad Gita. Again, there are a lot of differences between the two. We will not go into that because it is a vast subject, as I was mentioning. To him, a form means something of this material world and therefore an opposite conception of the Absolute is necessary in the beginning to concentrate the mind on the power extension of the Lord. So for this neophyte to conceive of the Satchidana form is, you know, difficult. So something, you know, because he's, you know, steeped into matter, he needs some material visualization. And that's why uh, this kind of a conception is given. You know, you build 
you know, 14 plant system and within the 14 plant system, you, you know, take the mud and uh, visualize the form of the Lord. <laughs> so based on the 14 plant. So this kind of visualization is a material conception, but because the universe is the energy of the Lord, so there is no difference between the energy and the energy. So such type of, it's a power extension of the Lord. So there is no difference between the power and the power extension of the Lord. Prabhupada makes that point more clear. As stated above, the Lord extends his potency in the form of Mahatattva, which includes all material ingredients. So what is that power? That power is the Mahatattva. The extension of power by the Lord and the Lord himself personally are one in one sense. But at the same time, the Mahatattva is different from the Lord. So they are simultaneously one and different. Therefore, the potency of the Lord and the Lord are simultaneously different and non-different. Achintya Beda Beda Tattva. So he cannot concentrate on the Satchitan in the form of the Lord. So he is told to concentrate on the power extension which is Mahatattva through which this universe is created. And both are non-different. The conception of the Virat Purusha, Prabhupada again is making it very clear, especially for the impersonalist, is thus non different from the eternal form of the Lord. It is not different from the eternal form of the Lord. There is no difference. This eternal form of the Lord exists prior to the creation of the Mahatattva, and it is stressed here that the eternal form of the Lord is par excellence, spiritual and transcendental to the material modes of the Lord. Material modes of nature. Sattvam Vishuddham Urjitam. So the Satchidananda form of the Lord is Sattvam Urjitam. <coughs> Sattvam Vishuddham Urjitam. That is what is being stressed here in the verse. Tadvai Bhagavatva Rupam Vishuddham Sattvam Urjitam. But the conception of the Virat Purusha is <coughs> the power extension of the Lord. It is non different from the Lord. But at the same time, it is different because the Satchidan and the form is, you know, Urjitam. It is Vishuddham. This is made of the Mahatattva Adibi. That is the point. The very fame, same transcendental form of the Lord is manifested by his internal potency. Whereas the Mahatattva Adibi is manifested by the external potency. And the formation of his multiferous manifestations of incarnations are always of the same transcendental quality without any touch of Mahatata. So all the Vishnu Murtis are completely Vishuddham. So that was also proved in the previous uh, discussion, if you remember. Okay. Prabhupada's, uh, sorry, Vishnu Chaturkari's commentary is on verse 2 and 3 together. So we had, you know, discussed yesterday verse 2. Uh, which was, uh, you know, the uh, Lord lying in the ocean of Garbodak Sakar and sitting in yoga, uh, sleeping in yoga with Nidra, he creates Brahma Vishwa Sridhampati. So, both the explanations we are going to take now. Okay. the That Purusha, so this is verse 2 commentary. I am just... Uh, Showing you verse 2 so that you are clear. This one. Yes, Ambasi Shainasya, Yoga Nidram Vitanvata, Nabim Vridam Bujat Asid Brahma Vishwasudampati. So I am reading this commentary of Vishwanashagar Thakur now. That Purusha entering into each universe, situated in his hair holes, lay down on the Garbhodak water which he entered, which he created there and went into a state of trance. So the Purusha, Garbhodak Shai Vishnu, enters into each universe and he lies down in the Garbhodak Sagar in a state of Yoga Nidra. The planets from Patal to Satyalok, Loka Vistara, are imagined to be situated at particular places on his limbs. Avvaya Samstani. Avvaya means the limbs. Samstani means they are situated. So, Patal to Satya. As I was mentioning, Patal are the feet of the Lord. Satya is the uh, head of the Lord and the face of the Lord. This form is Padanam, Garbhodakshai Vishnu, a portion of Pradimna. So, the Garbhodakshai Vishnu is 
a portion of pradyumna and yesterday we were discussing that karuna daksha vishnu or mahavishnu he is a portion of whom anyone knows remembers raise your hands anyone remembers raise your hands yes ravi kant prabhu ji ravi kant prabhu ji yes hari krishna prabhu ji uh, it's a, a sankarsana prabhu ji yes excellent it is sankarsan so garbhadaksha vishnu is pradyumna portion of pradyumna and uh, padmanab this form is called as padmanab anyone is aware where this padmanab deity is there very famous anyone knows raise your hands Okay, many have raised their hands uh vinita mata ji hari krishna prabhu ji dandrat pranam i just don't remember the name of the place but it is a sleeping deity the full where, form of where, the sleeping where, deity. Where, where is it um, i'm not recollecting it i remembered it two minutes before okay रेफर्ड हियर this is what is being referred here so this is padmanabh okay i just wanted to show you the picture so this is anand padmanabh from whom you know in the anand padmanabh deity you can see that uh, there is brahma ji also there is the lotus also there you can see very clearly uh, very very clearly you can see that okay let's go further in the discussion of vishnu chakra tagar's commentary the form mentioned in the previous chapter hari vrinchya hareti samnya shrimad bhagavatam 1 to 23 refers to the third purusha shirodakshayi an expansion of anirudh so in verse 2 1 to 23 uh hari is shirodakshayi vishnu and from him all the avatars manifest in this world it is from shirodakshay vishnu that's why all the devatas go to the shir sagar and pray and then you know shirodakshay vishnu in his uh he speaks to brahma that i'm soon going to incarnate so he is hari he is called as hari and he is the expansion of anirudh so sankarshan is a expansion of uh, uh Sankarshan's portion is uh, Karuna Daksha Vishnu or Maha Vishnu. Garbha Daksha is the portion of Pradyumna, and Shiv Daksha Vishnu is the portion of Anirudha. Okay, uh, I will take the questions a little later. Hold on. The first form, Maha Vishnu, is the inner soul of Prakriti. The second form, Garbha Daksha Vishnu, is the inner soul of the collective jivas in each universe. the third form shirodakshayi is the inner soul of each jiva so there are three parmatma features here so mahavishnu is the parmatma of the entire prakriti this pradhan and garbhadakshayi vishnu is the parmatma of this universe and shirodakshayi vishnu is the parmatma for each and every jiva so this is you know very clearly to be understood so these are parmatma features of the lord but again we have a conception parmatma means he should not have a form these all three forms have forms they are all you know mahavishnu is having a form garudakshay vishnu is having a form shirodakshay vishnu is having a form but they are parmatma features please remember the three acting as inner souls are expansions of sankarshan pradyumna and anirodh it is said 
ekam to mahata shrishtar dvitiyam tu tva anda samsitam tritiyam sarva bhutastam tani yatvam vichyate the first is the creator of mahatatva ekam to mahata shrishti so who is the mahavishnu he is the creator of mahatatva the second form is situated in the universe dvitiyam tu tva anda samsita he is situated within the universe the third form is situated in all living entities tritiyam sarva bhutastam one who knows all these forms is liberated tani gyatva mimuchyate satvata tantra so one who understands this is liberated this is the order of activities of mahavishnu related to this topic when he developed the desire to lie down again in a particular place he lay down in the karan ocean mahavishnu lies down in the karan ocean he then glanced at his energy prakriti as soon as it came out of his breathing so here again i am explaining the sequence uh where did the golok chart go yes mahavishnu who is the soul of this uh, prakriti which is called as pradhan he glances and along with his glance uh, uh the jivas are impregnated through shambhu in the womb of durga and this glance along with the glance he is exhaling the universes are also coming out of his skin pores so simultaneously this is happening that's the point i wanted to say by that glance making his intention known accomplishing merely by the power of his desire he produced the mahatatva and other elements spontaneously and after creating the universe out of the out of the elements garbhadakshai master of the universe was informed oh master enter it and go to sleep <laughs> so mahavishnu said oh master please go and enter into the ichas universe because a matter on its own cannot act there has to be the super soul just like you take a stone and the stone cannot move but you tie a thread and you hold it and you start turning it then it will start moving so the universe uh, cannot act without the presence of the super soul so garbhadakshai goes and gives life to the universe entering into the universe garbhadakshai vishnu went to sleep for a second after he after he again created the universe he then rejected the universe as a useless place sleeping place since it is material so he went to sleep for a second and he said oh this place is not good so there was no garbhadak ocean before that oh it's completely matter material then again garbhadakshai is made to sleep in a new universe for the lifetime of brahma for the lifetime of brahma he is made to sleep it is said in the third canto kaloyam dviparardakyo nimesh upacharyate avyakritas vyanantasya hi an anadher jagatatmana the duration of the two parts of brahma's life kaloyam dviparardakyo as above mentioned is calculated to be equal to 1 nimesh so for 1 second he went to sleep that one second is you know <laughs> entire life of brahma please remember nimesha upacharyate less than a second for the supreme person of godhead who is unchanging and unlimited avyakrit asyan anantasya hi and is the cause of all causes of the universe jana der agad atmana these forms are all spiritual so these forms are spiritual this form is pure sattva devoid of rajas and tamas vishuddha sattva now this is part of the commentary for verse 3 now and excellent urjitam completely spiritual made of eternity knowledge and bliss so propad more goes into the conception of virat purusha explanation but uh, vishnu chakra thakur doesn't uh, mention tadvai bhagavato rupam uh, sattvam vishuddham urjitam so that's what he says that uh, loka samsthane kalpito uh, 
Vishwanath Chakra Thakur doesn't comment on it much. Okay. Uh, yes, I will take up questions now for this verse. And then if uh, any other clarifications, we'll uh, then go to the next verse. Okay. Any questions you have, please raise your hands. One, two, three. Okay, I am going to only take three questions. And uh, from the answer, there should not be any more questions again. So just three questions I'll take. Okay, Virendra Yadav Prabhuji. Yes, I've unmuted you. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu uh, uh, we understand that this this uh, this form is imaginary. Uh, so, with respect to devotees, it is only for a neophyte. I mean, why it is uh, given here? This Firstly, form. neophyte neophyte terminology has to be clearly understood. The impersonalists are called as neophytes. <clears throat> so, from Impersonalist to personalist, you know, the impersonalist are the jnanis and the yogis. So they are called as neophytes in respect to the bhaktas. And within the bhaktas also, they are neophytes, they are kanishtas. So for the neophytes, again, jnani and yogi perspective, they have no knowledge of the Satchitan form. So for them, they are allowed to meditate on this conception of the Virat Purusha to make spiritual advancement. Now, for the bhaktas within the neophyte Kanishta category, uh, they cannot constantly remember the Lord. Keshu, Keshu, Cha, Bhaveshu, Chintosmi, Bhagavan, Mi. They have the understanding that the Lord, uh, Archa, Vigra, Sachinanda, but uh, they cannot remember. So, they use this same tool, which is a conception for the yogis and the jnanis, as a tool to remember the Lord. Like they see the mountain, they can remember it as Govardhan or uh, I was just passing by just three days back, three, four days back through the Sayadri Hills, the train and the mountain was huge expanse and there were trees and I just for a moment felt, you know, uh, the body hairs, you know, when you see the body hairs, they are very attractive. And it is mentioned that they are called, you know, the, the trees are the hairs on the body of the Lord. So just remembering like this, I am remembering the Lord. So for the neophytes, again, the Kanishta Adhikaris within the Bhakti, it is meant as a tool for remembrance. But the neophytes, which Prabhupada is referring is to the yogis, which is a tool for meditation. Uh, that form is also uh, not different from the Lord because it is a power extension of the Lord. I hope it is clear. Thank you, Guru. Thank you, Guru. Yes. Priya Mataji. Um, Prabhuji, in short, difference between Virat Purusha and Vishwarupa. Sorry, Virat Rupa and Vishwarupa. Uh, well, I told it's a vast subject. <clears throat> The Virat Purusha is a conception which is the terminology used in the Bhagavatam. Prabhupada uses it uh, interchangeably, but there is some difference. The Vishwarupa is what is being described. In fact, the 12th chapter, not sorry, the 12th, the 11th chapter is uh, titled as the Vishwaro uh, Vishwarupa Yoga. <clears throat> so, the Satchidanand form of the Lord is there on the battlefield, Krishna, and he uh, exhibits the universal form. So, uh, this is not a conception. Remember that. Just like the Vamandeva avatar, he is Satchidananda and he expands. He expands himself to cover the entire universe. So this form, Vishwarupa, is not material and it is spiritual. So that is the subtle difference. 
and again we'll not go into this subject quite in detail because it will require at least one entire seminar to explain all of this but that is the difference so Prabhupada uses it synonymously but there is a little difference and we need to know that okay is it okay or no for now fine Ashok Atma Prabhuji Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, the, my question is also an extension of uh, Prabhu's question. So I understood, uh, I mean, I heard that uh, Virata Rupa is portion of Vishwarupa. Is it right? Virat Rupa is portion of Vishwarupa? No. Yeah. No. I told you, these, these are terminologies uh -huh. and these terminologies are used by Prabhupada synonymously, meaning the same, but yet there is difference. Virat Purusha is a terminology used in the Bhagavatam, which is a conception of, you know, the 14 planetaries imagined to be the form of the Lord. Whereas the Vishwarupa is the Satchidanan, the form of the Lord, Krishna, who immediately expands himself. Covering the entire, you know, everything expands. Or Vamandev, who covers the entire universe, he himself expands. So that is spiritual. That was the point I was making. It is spiritual. So in Bhagavad Gita, we, I mean, uh, Arjuna says, sees, you know, uh, the form of the Virat Rupa. It's because he says uh, in that. Uh, again, again, you are using the term there, Virat Rupa. It is Vishwarupa there. Oh, Vishwarupa. But Vishwarupa, he says everything is appearing in his uh, I mean, in front of him. So that how to understand that. So that's what okay, that... I'll, I'll not go into this topic. I told you it's a vast topic, but I just clarified what is Virat Purusha and Vishwarupa, the difference. So we'll oh. stick on to that. I told you this whole Virat Purusha conception will require at least four to five seminars. Okay. So uh, trying to understand it uh, is not easy. One has to study the Bhagavatam repeatedly and uh, try to understand. But my point is, I have clarified what is Virat Rupa and what is Vishwa Rupa. Can, can you just say is spiritual. It yeah. is spiritual because the Lord himself expands. Hmm. You know, it is spiritual. Whereas the Virat Purusha is a conception tool which is mentioned in the Bhagavatam. And it is not spiritual. It is material. Because it is made of material ingredients. Are you getting this point or no? Uh, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Now I got it clear. Easy, huh? Like Krishna in the battlefield, he expands. So that expansion is not made of Mahatadibi elements. It is spiritual. Or Vamandev expanding and covering the universe. It's spiritual. It's completely spiritual. That's called as the Vishwarupa. Whereas the Virat Purusha is a conception and it is a it is material. It is not Vishuddham, Urjitam, Satvam Vishuddham. Okay? Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Happy? Yes, Prabhu. Happy, Prabhu. <laughs> okay. I'll, we, we cannot discuss this vast topic uh, at this point. I will continue now. Ravi Kant Prabhuji, you have any question? From the answer, sub question again. Yes, Prabhuji. No, no. From uh, no sub questions. My uh, my own question, Prabhuji. Like uh, Prabhuji, some question. Uh, I miss. I read in. I read in. Sri uh, Bhagavatam only. Prabhuji, uh, some question uh, is the you know gravitational force which bonds all the planet, and yes. uh, it's it's a correct understanding or not? Yes. Like. <laughs> Sankarshan, and, Akarshan, Akarshan. Yeah. And Krishna Pradhimna is, is a... Arayami Aham Ojasa. In the Bhagavad Gita, by my Ojas Sakti, I am holding all these planets. So that is the Sankarshan feature of the Lord. And Pradhimna is, is, is the intelligence of the human being. And uh, Aniruddha is the mind. mind. Is it yes. correct? Yes, yes. This again... Uh, is again described in the second canto, third canto of Bhagavatam. And um, 
again it is a vast topic but yes this understanding is correct so it it okay. it's it's supposed to be a uh, material all these three are looks like a uh, material what and this three are material means mind and intelligence is material only no prabhu ji so pardon, pardon? mind and intelligence which is representation of no, this no 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 please understand sankarshan pradyumna anirudh are all part of the chaturvya they are spiritual they are all spiritual so what is there in the macrocosm the macrocosmos within this body also there is the <clears throat> this is this is called as a microcosm microcosmos so the chitta refers to vasudev <clears throat> and the buddhi refers to uh, pradyumna or anirudh i don't recollect and the mind refers to anirudh so this is how you know we can understand <clears throat> and the mahatatva which is there at the universal level is chitta and that's why satvam vishuddham vasudev shatvitam when the chitta becomes pure the vasudev vasudev manifest there so again it is a vast topic uh, all these uh, requires elaborate study of bhagavatam as a foundation and then we can based on this foundation we can understand this is it okay for now yeah again like prabhu ji like acceptance of these things uh, means ki abhi i am not able to distinguish between these two things yes, matter it and... is not so easy but okay now uh okay i'll just give a little hint because you know we we have to understand that there are different dimensions of reality now <clears throat> संकर्षण संकर्षण वासुदेव संकर्षण अनिरुद्ध प्रद्युम्न ओके देर इन द चतुर्वीव हियर वासुदेव संकर्षण हाँ इट्स हियर इन साइड यू कैन नॉट सी देम सो वासुदेव संकर्षण अनिरुद्ध प्रद्युम्न दीज आर द फोर चतुर्वीव एंड दे आर रिप्रेजेंटेड Uh, in our body also i said but you know that there is a moon dt and the moon dt in the adi devik manifestation in this universe the devata the moon dt is controlling the mind but where is the moon dt getting its uh, energy from it is getting from you know aniruddha or pradyumna i am not able to distinguish between the two which one it is <clears throat> so i hope you are it's clear now yes prabhuji okay thank you a little bit fine okay let's continue uh, let's finish this series uh, five verses today yes पश्यो रूप्रक्षुषा सहस्रपादुरो भुजाना सहस्रमूर्द्या श्रवणाक्षी नासी सहस्रमौल अंबर कुंडल कुंडलोस्यापिचुअलाइज अदभ्रचक्षुषा द डिवोटी सी पश्यो अदो रूप दिस् अमेजिंग फॉर्म अद्भुत विथ थाउज ऑफ हैंड सहस्र लेग्स पाद and arms bhuja anana thousands of heads ears eyes and nose sahastra murda shavanakshi nasika shining with thousands of crowns earrings and clothes sahastra mauli ambar kundalosyat there is some message coming on the chat repeatedly i don't know what is this okay prabhupad's commentary prabhupad पश्यंत ही जस्ट फोकस इज ऑन दिस पश्यंत अदो रूपम सो टू सी द स्पिरिचुअल फॉर्म ऑफ द लॉर्ड वी नीड स्पिरिचुअलाइज अदभ्रचक्षुषा स्पिरिचुअलाइज प्रॉपर फोकस इज ऑन दैट विथ अवर प्रेजेंट मटीरियलाइज सेंसेज वी कैनॉट परसीव एनीथिंग ऑफ द ट्रांसेंडेंटल लॉर्ड 
our present senses are to be rectified by the process of devotional service and then the Lord himself becomes revealed to us. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is confirmed that the transcendent Lord can be perceived only by pure devotional service. Bhaktya maam abhijanati. So it is confirmed in the Vedas that only devotional service can lead one to the side of the Lord and that only devotional service can reveal him. In the Brahma Samhita also it is said that the Lord is always visible to the devotee whose eyes have been anointed with a tinge of devotional service. Preman Juna Churita Bhakti Viloshana. Prabhupada is quoting this. So we have to take information of the transcendental form of the Lord from the persons who have actually seen him with perfect eyes smeared with devotional service. Now Prabhupada Based on this principle, he gives an example. In the material world also, we do not always see things with our own eyes. We see sometimes through the experience of those who have actually seen or done things. Like, you know, somebody has gone to America and come. Now, I have not seen America. I have seen only the map of America. But this person has gone to America and he has seen America. So, we have to hear from him what is America and see through his experience. So similarly, those who are pure devotees who have seen the Lord, you know, we have to take information from them to understand the transcendental form of it. If that is the process for experiencing a mundane object, it is more perfectly applicable, applicable to matters transcendental. So only with patience and perseverance can we realize the transcendental subject matter regarding the absolute truth and its different forms. So this form which uh, is being described here in this verse is actually the Shahastra Shirsha Purusha. The Lord with Sahastra Shirsha. Shirsha means you know, head. The Shahastra Shavana, you know, ears, Akshi, eyes, Nasikam, Shahastra Mauli, Ambada, Kundal Asyat, you know, thousands of Quran hearings. So this is the unlimited, uh, you know, uh, the form with unlimited eyes, heads, you know, who, uh, <clears throat> who resides in the Satya Loga. The Lord, uh, Lord Brahma worships this Sahasar Shish Pusha. Brahad Bhagavatam confirms this. So, how again to, you know, understand this? I'll just give you, a, you know, some explanation. Now, you can see this Mahavishnu, um, his uh, Chatur, Chatur Puja. And he unlimitedly expands into Garbhadaksha Vishnu. So unlimited, you know, uh, forms from the Mahavishnu uh, with so many heads. You know, there are so many heads because Mahavishnu is expanding into Garbhadaksha Vishnu. So that's why he is Sahastra Shir Pusha. And here also in the Garbhadaksha Vishnu, <coughs> uh, he unlimitedly expands. <coughs> And Shirodaksha Vishnu also unlimitedly expands into various forms entering into all living beings. So like that, there is this Sahastra Shirsha Purusha who is mentioned and uh, this is uh, described more in detail in the in the Purusha Shukta prayers. Okay. Vishnu Chakra Thakur commentary is very brief. Those who have reached perfection by Bhakti can these see this form. So Prabhupada has made that word. Adabra means not scant, spiritual, spiritualized. That's it. Okay. So I will just take the next verse and then you know open the forum for question answers. Now, this is the last of the verses in the Purusha Avatar description. Devatiryan Naradaya. He, Etan, is the indestructible source, Bij Avayam. This is the Bija source. And quite what kind of Bij? Avayam. Now we have to understand Bij Avayam. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, Bijanam Sarvabhutanam. You know, I am the Bija who is eternal. Avaya. Is indestructible. So, uh, we take a banyan tree seed 
and plant it. So when the seed is planted, the seed transforms into a tree. Now there is no more seed. The seed is destroyed. Right? But the spiritual soul sparks which uh, enter the womb, these are eternal bijas. And that's why Krishna is mentioning that in the Bhagavad Gita. Similarly, uh, the source of all the avatars is also spiritual and it is eternal. That's why it is called as Bija Vayam. So he is the indestructible source of various avatars. Nana avataranam nidhanam. Nidhanam means unlimited avatars, various. His expansion is Brahma and Brahma's expansions are Marichi and others. Yash Amsha Amshena. So there are unlimited variety of expansions apart from the avatars. You know, Brahma, all the devatas, they are all his expansions. Through them, the Lord creates devatas, animals, animals. Sijjante devtirya naradaya. Okay, let's see Prabhupada's commentary on this. Prabhupada's commentary is very, very interesting. The Purusha, after creating innumerable universes in the Mahatattva, entered into each of them as a second Purusha, Kaurav Dakshai Vishnu. Now, when Prabhupada is saying the Purusha, whom is he referring to here? Please raise your hands to answer. One hand has been raised. Okay. Devi Radhika Mataji. Are you there? Jagdishwar Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Who is this Purusha here? Karana Dakshin. Excellent. Karana Mahavishnu. Mm. When he saw that within the universe there was only darkness and space without a resting place, he filled half of the universe with water from his own perspiration and laid himself down in the same water. Vishnu Chagatakur explained that in the previous commentary. Prabhupada is clarifying now. This water is called as Garbodak. Garbodak Sagar. Then from his navel, the stem of the lotus flower sprouted and on the flower petals, the birth of Brahma, the master engineer of the universal plan took place. Brahma became the engineer of the universe and the Lord himself took charge of the maintenance of the universe as Vishnu. Brahma was to generate from Rajaguna Prakriti or the mode of passion in nature and Vishnu became the lord of the mode of goodness. Oh, something is wrong. Vishnu being transcendental to all the modes is always is always aloof from materialistic affection. So Vishnu is transcendental, which we have proved already. This has already been explained. From Brahma, there is Rudra Shiva, who is in charge of the mode of ignorance, darkness. He destroys the whole creation by the will of the Lord. Therefore, all three, namely Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva, are incarnations of Garbhodakshaya Vishnu. They are incarnations, they are Gunavatas of Garbhodakshaya Vishnu. From Brahma, the other demigods like Daksha, Marichi, Manu and others become incarnated to generate living entities within the universe. So these are all the expansions. This Garbhodakshaya Vishnu is glorified in the Vedas in the hymns of the Garbhasuti, which begin with the description of the Lord having thousands of heads. So Sahastar Shirsha Purusha. Prabhupada is referring to that here now. The Garbhodakshaya Vishnu is the Lord of the universe and although he appears to be lying within the universe, he is always transcendental. This has already been explained. So, Tadvai Bhagavatam Rupam Sattvam Vishuddham Urjitam. So, that has been explained. The Vishnu, who is the plainly portion of Gardakshaya Vishnu, is the super soul of the universal life and he is known as the maintainer of the universe or Karadakshaya Vishnu. So, Vishnu, when we say it is, uh, sorry, Shirodakshaya Vishnu. Vishnu means maintainer, who is a Gunavatar and he is Expanding from Garbhodakshaya Vishnu. So he is from Garbhodakshaya Vishnu also comes Brahma. So in one sense, Garbhodakshaya Vishnu manifests the Gunavatars. And uh, 
uh, Vishnu means Shiro Dakshai, Vishnu who is the super soul of universal life. So the three features of the original Purushas are thus understood. All, and all the incarnations within the universe are emanations from this Shiro Dakshai Vishnu. Now Prabhupada, interestingly, in the in the translation uh, mentions one, three. This form, the second manifestation of the Purusha, the second manifestation of the Purusha is the Garbhodakshaya Vishnu is the source and instructive of all incarnations. So, Prabhupada says Garbhodakshaya Vishnu is the source of all incarnations but in the commentary he is saying all the incarnations within the universe are emanations from Shirodaksha Vishnu. Now, Garbhodaksha Vishnu is uh, the source of all gun guna avatars, and Shurodaksha Vishnu is the you know you know source of all incarnations within the universe. So that's to be clearly understood. In different millennium, there are different incarnations. And they are innumerable, although some of them are very prominent, such as Matsya, Vara, Purma, Rama, Narsimha, Vaman, and many others. So all these manifest from Shirodakshai, Vishnu. These incarnations are called Leela incarnations, which will be discussed from verses 6. Then there are qualitative incarnations such as Brahma, Vishnu, Vishnu and Shiva, or Rudra, who take charge of different modes of material nature. They manifest from Garudakshai Vishnu. Lord Vishnu is non-different from the personality of Godhead. Lord Shiva is the marginal position between the personality of Godhead and the living entities. He is Shiva Tattva. He is between Jiva Tattva and Vishnu Tattva. Brahma is always a Jiva Tattva. The highest pious living being or the greatest devotee of the Lord is empowered with the potency of the Lord for creation and he is called Brahma. Shrishti Shakti is given to Brahma by the Lord. His power is like the power of the sun reflected on valuable stones and jewels. This we have already uh, discussed uh, when we discussed uh, 1 to 23. When there is no such living being to take charge of the post of Brahma, the Lord himself becomes a Brahma and takes charge of the post. Lord Shiva is not an ordinary living being. He is a plenary portion of the Lord. But because Lord Shiva is in direct touch with material nature, he is not exactly in the same transcendental position of Lord Vishnu. Because Shiram Yada Dadi Vikara Vishesha Yogat. Milk is pure, but when it comes in contact with the sour item, it transforms into curd. Vishnu in contact with material nature becomes transformed into Shiva. And that is a separate manifestation of the Lord. And he is not exactly transcendental. Uh, Vishnu Dava comes in contact with the material gunas. He is a guna and is vibhu. Whereas Shiva uh, in order to create with Durga comes in contact. The difference is like that between milk and curd. I already explained. Curd is nothing but milk and yet it cannot be used in the place of milk. The next incarnations are Manus. Eta Nana Avataranam. So all the avatars are Manus Prabhupada. During one day's one day's duration of the life of Brahma, which is calculated to be solar 4,32 into 1,000 years, there are 14 Manus. Therefore, there are 420 Manus in one month of Brahma and 5,040 Manus in one year of Brahma. And 100 years means 5,4,000 Manus. There are innumerable universes with one Brahma in each of them and all of them are created and annihilated during the breathing time of the Purusha, Mahavishnu's breathing. Therefore, one can simply imagine how many millions of Manus are there during one breath of the Purusha. If there are five like four Manus during Brahma's one breath, there are unlimited universes. So you can imagine five like four into lakhs and lakhs and lakhs. So you can imagine how many incarnations are there. The Manus who are prominent within the universe are as follows. Yagya as Swayambhu Manu, Vibhu as Swaruchita Manu, Satyasena as Uttama Manu, Hari as Tamasa Manu, Vaikunta as Raivata Manu, Ajita as Chakshusha Manu, Vamana as Vaivasvata Manu, which is Kraivasant, Sarvabhoma as 
सावरणी प्रभु मनु ऋषभ एज दक्ष सावरणी मनु विश्वक्षेन एज ब्रह्म सावरणी मनु धर्म सेतु एज धर्म सावरणी मनु सुधामा एज रुद्ध सावरणी मनु योगेश्वर एज देव सावरणी मनु एंड बृहद बानु एज द इंद्र सावरणी मनु these are the names of one set of 14 manus covering four so many zeros so la years as described above then there are the yuga avatars the incarnations the yuga avatar the satya trita dwapar and kali the incarnations of each yuga are of different color the colors are white red black and yellow in the dwapar yuga lord krishna is black color appeared and in the kali yuga lord chaitanya in yellow color appeared so all the incarnations of the lord are mentioned in the ray. there are the yuga avatars the manvantara avatars there is no scope for an imposter to become an incarnation for an incarnation must be described mentioned in the shastras an incarnation does not declare himself to be an incarnation of the lord but great sages agree with the symptoms mentioned in the revealed scriptures the features of the incarnation and the particular type of mission which he has to execute are mentioned in the revealed scriptures apart from the direct incarnations there are innumerable empowered incarnations vibhutis they are also mentioned in the previous chapters like the the not the vibhutis the kumaras are the gyana shakti of the lord parsham is the dushta damana shakti such incarnations are direct as well as indirectly empowered when they are directly empowered they are called incarnations but when they are indirectly empowered like the devatas they are called as vibhutis directly empowered are Kur, uh, kumaras narada pritu shesha ananta as our vibhutis are concerned they are explicitly described in the bhagavad gita in the vibhuti yuga chapters and for all these different types of incarnations the fountainhead is garbhodakshayi vishnu eta nanan avatarana within the universe the avatars incarnation manifest from shiva daksha vishnu i hope this point is clear okay i'll just finish vishnu chakra tagur's commentary previously it was said that the lord was complete with 16 parts sodashala this verse shows that though he acts as a source bija he is equal to many seeds unlimited seeds come therefore he is the store room or treasure nidhanam like one banyan seed you put there is a tree and unlimited seeds come out so he is unlimited seeds which are all avaya indestructible he is amshi the source of all avatars who will be discussed in this chapter and he is eternal avaya his part is brahma and brahma's parts are marichi and others from them the lord creates the devatas and others the devatas are considered the lords vibhuti propat made that clear and now who are the avatars who manifest will be discussed from verse 6 which we observe verse 6 which we will take up tomorrow any questions or clarifications up till now for the fifth verse which we discussed okay one question only one question anyone else has any question two questions so only two questions i'm going to take now yes priya mata ji Uh, purusha sukta prayas exactly if we want to refer what is the source you know, like not going here and there and doing r and d it is there uh, it's part of the rig veda and uh, there is an entire book written on purusha sukta uh, which is uh, regularly recited and uh, it comes in the bhagavatam but it is in a uh, in a, it is presented in a different way the bhagavatam deals it the, in a different way but uh, the original purusha sukta prayers are there and it is now printed in the form of book if you want you can refer that and uh, this uh, garbha stuti garbha stuti is the same you know garbha daksha vishnu uh, uh, mentioned in the purusha sukta that is the garbha stuti it's called as the garbha stuti okay and just now you said in vibhutis kumaras have what shaktis and no, no, parsha no, no, no. there is difference between vibhutis vibhutis are indirectly empowered whereas um, the directly empowered are the kumaras kumara is gyan shakti okay uh, gyan and parshuram dash drusht daman shakti matlab brahma ji brahma ji is empowered with uh, shrishti shakti 
the prithu maharaj is the prajapalana shakti like that okay and parshuram i mentioned just now dushta daman is the dushta okay. daman shakti okay vinita mata ji uh hari krishna prabhu ji uh prabhu ji i want to understand the difference between expansion and plenary portion okay uh prabhupad uses this term uh um, uh she doesn't use the expansion term he uses plenary portion vishnu chakra thakur uh uses uh actually banu maharaj has translated as an expansion actually prabhupad uses plenary portion i also for many years was bewildered what is this plenary portion you know <laughs> plenary portion you know it looks very bewildering but prabhupad is uh, you know very uh, refined in his use of uh, english because he was educated in the scottish british college and he used terminologies which are very close to the vedic terminologies so mahavishnu plenary portion is garbhadakshay vishnu and garbhadakshay vishnu's plenary portion is called as you know uh, shirodakshay vishnu so these are the terms he is using for amsha amshena so amsha amshena and again amsha is plenary portion and amsha of amsha is called as kala the plenary portion of the plenary portion is called as kala So and it, again the amsha and amsha and amsha is called as you know uh, avish avish so there is shakta avish shakti ka avish so like that these are definitions are there in the vedic terminology and prabhupada is keeping it simple but he is giving a very refined term is coined prabhupada in fact had to coin his own terminologies to explain in the english language okay Okay, so fine. to understand, if we give an example, then Mahavishnu is the expansion, and uh, Garbhodakshay, Shirodakshay are the plenary portions. Again, Mahavishnu is also an expansion of Shankarshan, and yes. Shankarshan is the expansion, expansion of Adi Shankarshan, and uh, Adi Shankarshan is an expansion of Balram, like that. Balram. Okay. So Am Sham Sha Nam Shay Nam. Okay. Like that. Okay. Thank you, Prabhuji. I got it. Okay. ಕೃಷ್ಣಾ you know it's the via medium the gate you know? just like you know the president visits the jail the jail has a entrance and he also uses that entrance to enter it doesn't mean that you know he is uh, he is bound you know all the prisoners are also taken through that gate and imprisoned and because the you know president is entering but he is not you know he uses that uh so similarly uh through the via medium of garbhaksha vishnu uh all incarnations manifest so that is how we have to understand it all right all right all right so thank you thank you all right thank you very much shilaprabhupad ki jai grandra shrimad bhagavatam ki jai hari krishna